So, welcome everyone. Uh, this talk uh, should be the first one of the day uh, about uh, OBIAT, not only about OBIAT, but several topics around uh, uh, open standard and open format. Uh, this morning uh, we were uh, introducing a bit uh, during the open session and also during uh, the um, speech from uh, Simon, the COSMO project that is uh, uh, the very first uh, idea from uh, TDF to create something uh, uh, that is uh, not just a project uh, used by only by uh, LibreOffice uh, and uh, our community. So what is it Cosmo? Uh, it's an acronym, just because we like to use acronyms. And uh, it's the community of the ODF specification containers. So the name should just clarify uh, which is the main goal. Uh, the, the idea to, to create uh, this new uh, project, this new, let's say, independent project, uh, was uh, uh, started uh, um, around 2018. Uh, just because uh, looking at uh, the uh, main format that uh, the RealFace is using, uh, so ODF, and looking uh, at the development of the standard, was clear enough that uh, there was a technical committee uh, working uh, on the uh, new implementation, new uh, improvement to the standard, but uh, the standard was not really available to, to the public. Uh, apart from Michael Schall, that is one of the <laughs> Uh, contributor to the ESMAN, uh, uh, our contributors to this uh, technical committee. Uh, how many uh, here uh, know something about uh, Oasis uh, and how the process uh, uh, of the standardization of OBF is uh, working? Raise your hand, okay. Something. So, uh, we are talking about the standard, we are talking about uh, something that uh, should be written and made available in a way that uh, can't be uh, confused, uh, should be uh, standardized, uh, just something that uh, uh, then uh, should be possible to implement, uh, for example, in the software. So as you can imagine, it's not just something that you can write uh, in your spare time uh, for creating uh, uh, the new version of the standard. There is a process, everything uh, is uh, uh, under the umbrella of uh, Oasis. So uh, it's not PDF, uh, it's Oasis uh, that is uh, uh, taking care of uh, other standards and also of the F. Um, the um, uh, work uh, at Oasis uh, is organized uh, in uh, technical committees uh, where there are developers that are uh, sharing ideas, collecting uh, specification, and then uh, writing uh, uh, the standard or updating uh, an existing one. So the process uh, is uh, a really long one. You need to write uh, the specification in a different way, otherwise you risk to have something uh, that can't be uh, implemented in uh, real software. So the technical committee was working and uh, it's still really active, but in the reality, uh, what, is, what was missing uh, uh, for making, uh, for releasing uh, the new version of the standard uh, was uh, the technical document that is used for um, creating, uh, for example, the new version of the software, the technical specification. So um, TDF, for this reason, decided to try to push a bit more, investing directly uh, for um, sponsoring uh, uh, a, an expert that was uh, uh, able to create uh, the, final, uh, the, the final version of this uh, specification, so ODF in this case uh, uh, 1.3, uh, for improving uh, uh, the, the softwares that are uh, using ODF uh, uh, in the daily workflow, like uh, for example uh, LibreOffice. So, as I was saying, uh, uh, 
the idea was to create something uh, that was not just uh, connected uh, with uh, LibreOffice. Uh, ODF uh, is a standard uh, used also by our uh, software. There are, uh, the, the specification, uh, as I was saying before, are uh, available for everyone. So everyone with uh, the technical uh, background uh, can create uh, uh, his own uh, um, product, uh, able to handle properly. Uh, the ODF uh, files. So the, the main goal was to create something really independent. And uh, um, with, uh, with the foundation, with the, the board, we decided to start uh, this uh, uh, cost project um, under the public software uh, SIC. Uh, it's uh, a UK company and uh, it's a um, as a legal entity, it's a community interest, interest company. Uh, the COSM project uh, is the first example of uh, something that can be uh, crowdfunded for creating a, a, a new standard. Uh, the, the main uh, sponsor of this project was TDF, but then uh, was really uh, was it surprising to see Microsoft uh, sponsoring the project itself? Because as I was saying, uh, on the is not used only by the office. So Microsoft uh, was uh, uh, joining the group, sponsoring uh, uh, the uh, Cosmo project. Then we had uh, uh, other uh, companies that uh, decided to uh, support this, uh, this idea like uh, Collabora, CAB, then we have uh, the UK government and just recently the European Commission. Uh, this uh, money were used for uh, creating uh, the, the final specification uh, for the ODF uh, uh, 1.3 that uh, the technical committee was already uh, developing uh, uh, <laughs> doing a, a really great job for Having something that is also modern and that can uh, include features that are really useful for the uh, for the daily users. So the good news is that the idea was a good one because uh, we finally have uh, uh, the draft uh, of the new specification of the ODF uh, uh, 1.3. Uh, Obviously, as I was saying, the standardization process is not something that can be uh, concluded in a few minutes, uh, not in a few months. So probably we will be able to see uh, the, the final standard approved probably at the end of the uh, 2020, not before. Maybe we will be lucky, but usually this one is the normal process. So this one is the first way uh, to, to support uh, an important file format that can guarantee the, the freedom from the random login uh, while uh, migrating to the office or in general to our free uh, office suite. It's always important to keep in mind that the main goal is not just to have new LibreOffice users, but to have uh, users that are uh, really free that can uh, uh, keep the control back to their documents because this one is the most important thing. If you are not the owner of the content that you are producing, you can also uh, lose a lot of important uh, information that are not available anymore because the software that can open that file is not available anymore. So ODF means freedom. And for the very same reason, uh, the next step, always connected uh, with uh, Oasis uh, and the technical committee, was to try to keep, uh, to, to close the other gap that was uh, in any case uh, evident uh, to all the people uh, involved around the uh, ODF uh, uh, technical committee. So, uh, discussing with uh, Oasis, the idea was to uh, start this uh, ODF advocacy uh, project. Um, initially, when we were discussing with the uh, Oasis, uh, the idea was uh, to start finally uh, an, a new advocacy uh, project, uh, a new a new way to 
uh, share the, the importance to, to use uh, open format like uh, OVF for the, for the documents. Uh, then, uh, after this first discussion, the idea was to create uh, this new advocacy project uh, under the uh, open project uh, at uh, OASIS that uh, it's uh, a new way to, uh, to sponsor uh, standard and in general activities because the main issue when you have to work around standards is for example that for uh, working on the technical committee you must be an OASIS member so you must pay uh, the fee for being uh, uh, a member of this technical committee. With the open project, the idea is to have, uh, in any case, uh, members of the um, technical committee, or in general, OSIS member, members that can uh, um, ask uh, to start another project, but when the project uh, is active, when the project is approved, also non-OSIS member can, uh, can join uh, the project, can contrib contribute to the project uh, and push the activity. So the main uh, activities, just because uh, the idea is to share as much as possible, um, is to have everything uh, for the moment available on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, the page uh, is just uh, a charter with the information about the project, uh, uh, about uh, the mission, because obviously it's in any case uh, something uh, endorsed by Oasis, so it's not uh, a club of friends that are meeting over a beer and chatting. It's <laughs> something approved by, uh, sponsored and approved by Oasis. So there is a charter, charter there is a mission, uh, there is a, a board, and uh, this particular project was uh, um, started by TDF with uh, Italo in, uh, uh, in this uh, board uh, on behalf of TDF, obviously, and uh, CAP that is uh, one of the uh, members of the technical committee, and with uh, uh, me as a uh, contact person for uh, always for the advocacy project. So the charter. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the main problem for ODF is that the standard is great, is there, is available, but uh, there are several people that are not really aware of the importance of ODF, of the um, really great freedom that uh, can be achieved using uh, uh, this format instead of our preliminary format. And, uh, the, the group uh, should also create uh, materials that uh, can be used also by other uh, people that want to join uh, the, the group, the advocacy group, uh, just for having a, a, a common base uh, that can be used for uh, sharing information, uh, for avoiding maybe to, to share not completely correct information. And, uh, uh, there are, let's say, three uh, main uh, ideas. Uh, the first one is to work on the uh, concept of awareness, uh, but uh, it's also important to work uh, on the uh, education. So, uh, the educational topic is always something uh, also uh, part of the TDF mission. So, for us, it's important to share information, to share knowledge in this case about uh, uh, ODF. So we are not talking about schools uh, with the uh, concept of education, but we are talking about uh, uh, general information that should be uh, shared, that should be available in particular to uh, the decision makers that can decide uh, to switch uh, from uh, a closed source, uh, a closed format uh, to an uh, open standard format like ODF. Then, when they are switching to ODF, maybe they can also consider to switch to LibreOffice. But uh, our goal should be not only to have new LibreOffice users. So this one, uh, it's uh, a concept that we should keep in mind uh, while uh, uh, working on, uh, on migration, for example, from other software to, to LibreOffice. And obviously, uh, we need to do a bit of marketing, uh, but uh, when 
uh, we are talking about marketing and sometimes uh, there are people that are just thinking to uh, flares and stickers and something like that. But we know that the marketing of, of a, uh, a standard is not just this. It's important to have materials available, but it's uh, uh, much more. And there are obviously uh, several several uh, uh, benefits that are also for for the for business. So in particular when uh, we are uh, in contact with uh, um, uh, big companies that are planning to migrate or uh, public administrations or in, in general uh, also daily users but <laughs> in particular uh, big uh, uh, migrations is uh, in really fundamental to share what is ODF and why it's important to uh, adopt uh, ODF instead of other uh, file formats. I trust me, uh, I saw a lot of confusion while discussing with a so-called expert uh, around uh, file formats, standards, etc. And uh, since seems really impossible, but uh, for mm, several people it's uh, uh, normal to use uh, other uh, file formats just because uh, everyone uh, is already using that format and they can't get the point that uh, in that way, uh, choosing that kind of formats, they are really risking to, to lose the access to their documents and it's something that uh, should be uh, a concept that should be pushed much uh, much more than uh, what we, we have done until now. So this one, uh, it's uh, uh, less or more what we are planning to do with, uh, with the ODF uh, advocacy of the project. Then, obviously, we can, uh, we hope to have much more uh, people involved, uh, not only uh, users, but also uh, companies, so everyone that wants to uh, share the effort to uh, ODF uh, in, the, in the world. Maybe switch to the other microphone. Yeah. That looks a bit weird. So the uh, the idea um, is uh, uh, to uh, explain people that when uh, we are talking about standards, we are talking to something that is close to you to end users, and not something that is close to technical people. Of course, standards. We we have technical people that ensure and thanks. Uh, the technical people that are here that ensure that the standard is good but then uh, the advantages of the standard are for non-technical people and this is something uh, that we have to educate people about because usually standards are seen as something uh, which is very technical most standards are very technical uh, especially if we think about mechanical standards or these are very technical, but in this case, when you talk about document standards, document standards are there to protect the end user, not to protect the technical guy. Technical guys can deal with non-standards. End users have issues in dealing with non-standards. So the basic concept, and this is something that I would like everyone to think about, uh, ODF is solid and robust. Never use secure, never use better. It's not better, it's a better standard. It's not a better format, it's a better standard. We are not entering into the merit uh, of uh, the quality of ODF versus the quality of Office Open XML. That is a discussion for technical people. The for the user, the difference is that 
it is a better standard for the user. It's not a better standard for technical people. I don't give a damn. It, that's not a problem. If they make it a better standard for technical people, there will be additional advantages. But at the moment, it's a better standard for end users because it's consistent across operating systems. So if you create a document uh, with a LibreOffice on, on a Linux machine, and you create the same document with LibreOffice on a Macintosh, or on a Windows machine, the file will be extremely similar. Of course, getting 100% and an identical 100% is probably close to impossible, but the similarities will be over 90% and probably over 98%. I've tested that. I, I use a Linux machine now, but I have a Macintosh uh, at home and I have a a Windows machine, a virtual Windows machine, and I test and I make uh, and I compare the documents and the underlying uh, HML, XML, is very similar. So the document is uh, almost identical. This means that the parser on, on the different uh, platforms has, has not to make a, an additional effort to read the document. The, it's basically the same. This is the reason why when we exchange the document, the document, uh, we, we, we never have problems. Maybe the document can, can be broken, but this is another story. This happens, it's bits can be broken. But when you open uh, an, a presentation that is made on Macintosh and you open it on Windows, unless the user has made mistakes, which may happen, but the doc, you will be able to open the document without any issue. It's truly inter, and this means that it is a, it's a truly interoperable format. So when you open the document, you don't have to think about it as being created with the online version of LibreOffice. So there might be issues because uh, uh, you know um, images are not embedded. Images will be at the same place. And is predictable. So, uh, for instance, uh, it happened. We, we had a user in Italy uh, that had a, a, a presentation. The presentation broke, and I asked the user, uh, "If you don't have anything secret in the presentation, can you send me the file?" I unzipped the file. I separated the images and the text, and I sent the user back all the text of the slides and all the images. And it, it, she was a lady and she told me, how could you do that? I said, because it's everything is in the file. So the file was broken, so you cannot open it again with the impress. But I can give you all the elements, so you, can, you will be able to reproduce the file in a matter of minutes. This because uh, when a paragraph uh, is a paragraph in LibreOffice, it's a paragraph in XML. If you look at Microsoft Office documents, a paragraph can be whatever. You go from, it can be a paragraph, but it can be a list of XML text connected to each other by means of other XML uh, tags but it's not, not under the form of a paragraph for the human mind. So, for the human mind, a paragraph starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. Uh, for the 97.5% of human beings with, who have not a technical background, like me, this is a paragraph. If you ask what is a paragraph, they will say it's a sentence ending with a, with a, with a full stop. And for LibreOffice, this is true. It's not true for Microsoft Office. So ODF is better, is a better standard file format for users. This is the concept that we have to work for. This is the concept that we have to convince people. Uh, tech, if, if someone enters into the discussion, but Office Open XML can handle that kind of feature, I don't mind. Isn't, we are not talking about the feature that can be handled by a format. We are talking about how the format protects the users against 
issues with the computer. And these are, this is what no technical user what no technical user have. They have issues because in some cases they do not manage the computer, they don't have the, a control over the computer. I see, for instance, uh, I see my wife, she's, a, she's not a power user. In some cases she has issues with the, with the, with the files, which are not related to the files, but to the fact that the computer is not behaving as she expects it to behave. And if the format is predictable, the user will, be, will, will find it easier to deal with documents because documents are predictable. So the way the document is made will be consistent, will be the same. This is a good marketing concept. It's like you say, you know, it's, uh, uh, if you want to uh, eat food uh, and you don't know what is in the, in, in the can, you usually read the ingredients. It's like having ODF that has an ingredient that say text readable by the user. And the other one are text that are readable by technical people but not by the user. So it's like buying a, a, a dish of spaghetti in the United States and uh, uh, realize that they're not spaghetti. That is Office of an XML. Uh, they are a similar, you know, they are an eatable piece of pasta, not spaghetti as we define them in, Ita in Italy. ODF is real spaghetti. <laughs> the other one are fake spaghetti, or if you want uh, uh, spaghetti cooked uh, the American way. American pasta. Yeah. How they do that in Seattle? So, uh, some ideas, and many of these ideas I've already uh, presented them, so may not be completely new to you, but I think that it's so important that we all become familiar with this, uh, that I want to repeat them, and I want to have your feedback, because uh, the way we are dealing uh, with format may be different according uh, to our cultures, may be different the way that people work with computers in different countries, in different environments. So please uh, give us a feedback and say, this concept is good for Japan, okay, let's use it. Uh, let's try it. Maybe it works in Japan, it works in Italy, I don't know. But until we don't try, we don't test it. We will never know if something that is, has been elaborated by a Japanese guy or a French lady uh, works in Italy, Spain or in Germany. So we have to test. We don't have the money to take a marketing agency that makes the test for us. So let's help each other to do the testing ourselves. Share the concept. When you make a presentation about the DFM, frankly, there's a huge amount of presentation about ODF in Taiwan. Unfortunately, it does them in Chinese because uh, they use a weird language in that country. Uh, but I would like to, to see Franklin and maybe Eric that is behind. Eric is a shy person, but he's a fantastic guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to see them presenting in English they are Chinese slides. When you talk about ODF in Taiwan, I would like to listen to your presentation because I'm sure that we can learn from you how you present ODF to a different culture. And maybe 80% of what you say can be used in Europe or adapted, of course, we, we, we have, or adapted to what we are doing. So let's do that more together. ODF advocacy is that, is put together the knowledge base of the project around ODF and then make it popular where we need to make it popular, which is public administrations, uh, CIOs of companies, people that decide what to implement. 
Because if we manage to do like they've done in Taiwan, that is, uh, it's not important the software that you're using. It's important to use a software that is making a good ODF. But first, let's produce a standard format. Then, of course, when you decide that you produce a standard format, then you can start discussing which software is producing the better, the better format. But first, teach the other to produce a standard document. So, uh, I know that you, you, you all know the left one. The, the, the left one is a free software foundation campaign. We cannot read your documents. I don't know if you know the right one. Uh, it's, it's not Photoshop. It's a true document. It exists. It's a manual on app, and maybe you don't read this, but the title is How to Lock in Your Clients. So it's, there, there's no uh, other meaning. I mean, how to lock in your clients. And if you are able to write a 60 page manual on how to lock in your clients, it means that you've done a hell of a job on that. This is a manual from uh, Microsoft to professional services firm. So how to lock in the clients using software, of course, because uh, it is not. Microsoft is not producing peanuts, so it's not how to lock in people with peanuts, it's how to lock in people with software. And we have the answer. The answer is uh, the open document format. Uh, and uh, the, the tagline, uh, the document standard that which offers freedom of choice is true because uh, you don't have to choose an operating system, you don't have to choose a software, you have many different software that you use ODF. And you, don't, you, you can use it on uh, different platforms. Uh, we have, uh, uh, these, are, these are in alphabetical order, so to, not to make a... So these are the countries where there is a kind of law that promotes ODF as a standard. Uh, there are different ways of promoting it. France, uh, they have the referential, uh, so they say, the reference document should be ODF. Portugal, they have a law that says we should use ODF. No one uses ODF, but the law is there. Sweden, they have a purchase law. So the purchase law says you can purchase software in a public administration only if it manages ODF. In Taiwan, they basically have everything, and UK as a similar law to Portugal. The difference is that in UK they are implementing the law, so they, they are working. And in fact, we have the UK government uh, in the advisory board of the Document Foundation has funded the COSME project because they are interested. And they are working. They, I mean, it's not going that they, they standardized in 2014, but it's not going to happen in, in, in three years, four years, five years, they probably it will take them 10, 15 years to, because it's an education pro process. So they have to educate people. And of course, with the, with the old generation fading away, it will be easier with the new generation coming in uh, to educate people. So I, I expect the process to, to become faster when the, the new generation will come in, because they understand more of computers than the old generation. Uh, what's an open format? We all know what an open format is, but get a customer to explain that to people. Uh, because uh, people do not understand what an open format is. They think that an open format is something that is freely available, so that you can use to save a document from a software. That is not an open format. So many people, when, when I talk to public administration, many people tell me, yeah, but I'm using an open format headset. Anyone can read a docx. Uh, uh, this is already not true, but let's say that, let, let's assume that everyone is able to read a docx. The problem is that it is not open. Why? Because uh, the development is, is not a transparent process. So uh, the minutes of the meetings, 
are not available, so we don't even know if there are meetings. Because uh, if you don't publish the date and the minutes of the meeting, uh, you can have the meeting or not have the meeting. Uh, so it has changed since uh, the first iteration. I don't know. Nothing has been published. The reality is that if you analyze the, the files, the files have changed. So either the standard has changed or the standard is not implemented. Because if you implement a standard, the document has to be consistent. So get a customer trying to find a, the way to explain what an open format is to your colleagues, to people, when you do presentation is important. If you present LibreOffice, always remember to introduce ODF. Uh, because otherwise people will give for granted that LibreOffice opens Microsoft Office file and is uh, something to handle Microsoft Office file. We had a, a, a French lady a few days ago writing on, uh, the, on a mailing list. Uh, I want my money back because I thought that my LibreOffice was a clone of Microsoft Office and it's not. And in this case, we are happy to refund the guy because it's simply the wrong attitude to think that LibreOffice is just a free version of Microsoft Office. It's a completely different story. And, and learn and how to describe a proprietary format. When people ask you, uh, and this has happened to every one of us uh, uh, in, in our personal history, I don't, I cannot read anymore that file. Instead of telling them, uh, I can help you, which is what we usually do, spend the, five, the first five minutes, explain them that if they had used a standard format, this would have not happened then you show them that a program that is based on standard format can open a non-standard document. Because usually LibreOffice opens documents that all version of Microsoft Office uh, is not opening. So either all doc files or uh, I have cases of uh, last version of uh, Microsoft Office, so 2019, not opening Office 2007 document, so not opening to the uh, docx documents. So let I know that is uh, sometimes we don't have the time to do this kind of stuff, but we have to. Uh, I mean, we don't have the money to make advertising uh, on uh, the Spiegel uh, or the Figaro or Corriere della Sera and say, why don't you learn how to uh, what. Uh, what the benefit of a, of a uh, open standard. So we have to be really ourselves that are ambassadors of the open standard uh, concept. ODF is an open standard. What is ODF? Uh, this is easy. Uh, I'm not going to repeat. Uh, the slides will be available. Many of these slides you've already seen them. Uh, and if you think the elements of interoperability, we have a technical element, it's available. We have the format, we have the standard, we have the platforms. They are, they are available. XML is a standard, so if you uh, respect the XML standard, you have the, the, the data format which is available. Where the problem is, is that is the institutional, so the systems, are not giving importance to, to the standards and the human factor, so the people is not giving importance to the standard. So they, when I show this, uh, these slides, in some cases, people will say, yeah, but this is what happens with uh, Microsoft Office. They say, no, no, sorry, because if one of these PCs um, has a very old version of Office, it will never open a DocX document and vice versa. So a, a, a new version of Microsoft Office will not open a, an old doc, doc for, uh, format. So it's not happening because it's not a standard. 
while on the F base interoperability is this one, so the, 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 the relationship, the, the, the one to one relation between software and content, which is the relation that Microsoft offers us, is not happening. You don't have a one-to-one -one relation. You have a one-to-many. Content, many software can produce it. Content is always the same. And uh, about cost, unfortunately, we, uh, I think that earlier or later, we will find the money to make a search on this topic. Because I think uh, this uh, uh, will be quite important. But, uh, we, we can use this example, uh, I, I've used it recently uh, at the, because I, I was called by, I'm a member of the Italian PR Association and uh, they consider me a geek, so you can understand how geeks are the other. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the president had an issue, haha, -ha, he was not able to open his presentation made on his home computer on the association computer. Ha <laughs> ha! And uh, I was at the meeting. And I was supposed to listen. So they, they it was not able, they called me, they, they Italo, are you able to open it? And I come with this, with this computer. And this computer uh, looks like a Windows machine to the normal human being, because it's a... Uh, so I, I opened LibreOffice, and uh, they, they look and say, it, it doesn't look like Windows. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't look like Windows, it's Linux. Oh, so you can use Linux. You're all, the nice thing is that it's, it's so old that you can use Linux. <laughs> and I say, yes, it, 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 you need one neuron connected to your both your ends. So that's what you needed, no more than that. Uh, so I opened the presentation of the president with LibreOffice, it was perfectly, uh, and he did the presentation from my Linux computer at the meeting. And at the end, so, so, uh, I don't think I, can, I, I will be able to do it again. I said, and yeah, for sure, you don't have the neuron connected to the end, so that's, uh, which is, by the way, knowing the guy is true, uh, but this is just collateral damage. It's not because he's using Windows. It's, uh, the, the damages are connected to other stuff. Uh, anyway, the National Institute of Standard and Technologies in the States uh, was called by the... You, you may not be familiar with the... What is called U.S. Capital Facilities Industry. Uh, when in the, the United States when in the United States uh, uh, a building company wants to build a, a skyscraper, let's say 170 store uh, building 300 meters high, they don't have pocket money to pay for it, of course. You need millions of dollars. So you, you go to these guys that are basically giving you the money to start the building. But all, they give you millions of dollars. In some cases, they give you billions of dollars. And at the end of the year, they would like to know where the billions of dollars have been spent. So let's make it short, but they were missing at the end of the year. They were... Try the other one. Yeah. yeah. Although I can increase my voice, though, which is making it... It's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, they, they were missing one billion, one billion dollars. So they, they, all the accounts that were given them were the X minus one million dollars figure. So they said, I mean, one, we would like to find where that one billion dollar has been spent. So they went to that institute, which is a, a, a neutral uh, entity, they said, can you make a research? And they, they produce a 65, 7 or 72 page document uh, that is about, uh, uh, as written here, cost analysis of inadequate interoperability. So it's uh, rather easy to understand. And uh, 
These are, so the, the three numbers that you see in red, and these are millions of dollars. They are not, uh, they are not uh, uh, euros that you have in your pocket. So data translation cost, 2 million 1,039, uh, 1, okay, not a lot of money. Manual re-entry cost, 462 millions of dollars in one year. Manual re-entry means I was not able to read the previous, I had the printed previous document, but could not read the digital document. So I had to rewrite contracts, uh, descriptions, all the, the, this stuff. And reworking design files, this is uh, thanks to Autodesk. It's uh, $968,000. And this is before starting to build the building. Then after the building has started, you have another 27 million and fiscia, as we say, Italian dollars, uh, and other translation costs. So, water per piano, empty for, for, full for empty, as we, this is Italian macaroni English, uh, you have 500 million dollars disappearing for lack of interoperability. It's true that this is a very capital intensive industry, but it's 500 million dollars. I would like to have them myself. I think all of us would like to, even <coughs> sharing 500 million dollars between us would be nice. Okay, so uh, as a cost, interoperability as a cost. Show that document, it's usually enough huh, to go to people and say, Do you want to, I, I can uh, explain you the, the 72 pages. Uh, it's enough to show them the PDF, they will never accept you to send them the PDF, which is something that I always try to do, but no one wants the PDF. They say, I believe you, you, I trust you, what you're saying. Sorry, I lost the, I had the question. Is it only in the USA or in the world? No, this is USA, but it's an industry that is easy to reproduce uh, in any part of the world, so it's a building industry. Okay. It's like going to the bank and asking money for the building industry, for, to, for a building. The, the fact is that but documents are the, the documents that are using the building industry. So you have contracts, descriptions. Uh, what we say, I don't know in, 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 in English, but we, when we say capital da parto, so it's uh, when you have uh, the, the assignment, uh, the document that assigns a work. Uh, these have to be clear because, of course, uh, there is a lot of money involved, uh, and therefore the document has to be clear. And uh, the problem is that the documents are not, and, and this is all explained in details in the document. So I, I only show you the, the, the final table, but the details are documents have been rewritten because it was impossible to read them and so on. And of course, they, they, for, for such a figure, a figure, they don't accept the scanned document, you know, you know they want the original, for yeah. sure. I mean, if you give someone three billion dollars, I think you want the signature by pen, and you want also to choose the color of the pen for this kind of money. So ODF with Office of XML. Everyone knows how much I like bananas, so these are the two logos. <laughs> and actually, I didn't design the Office of XML logo. This is a design by a Greek guy. Uh, issue, document complexity. So this uh, is a little bit, it's, we are entering into a more technical uh, uh, area. It's uh, not really technical, but uh, to explain it, you need to uh, transform into human readable concept something that is technical. Uh, the reality is that the document is an extremely, we, we consider document as, a, as everyday stuff. The reality is that documents are very complex because in a document there, are, there is a, 
an ontology, there is a syntax, there is a so you, you, you have flow, uh, you have images, you have un undergoing, if you have an index, you have, a, um, you have a, an underlying uh, flow of contents, uh, then you have references, uh, so the document can be extremely complex. And people do not understand this. Uh, so we have to make it, we have one hour. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Okay, uh, so we start the later, yeah, okay, no problem. Uh, so, okay, you know the red stuff, uh, uh, women have more colors than men, so for us this is simple red, uh, but this is the way that the red is described by LibreOffice and uh, by Microsoft Office, you see that it's completely weird. Uh, these are the dates. I, when I meet Microsoft people, I always ask them their birthday. And uh, when they say January, I say, no, 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 sorry. My birthday is 19948. They say, what does it mean? I say, this is Excel number. So you are a Microsoft employee, you should know Excel numbers. Not the numbers, not standard numbers use Excel numbers. Some Microsoft employees are not even aware that Excel uh, stores number in that weird way as uh, consecutive numbers from uh, uh, January 1st, uh, 1900 forward. Then comparing this one, this is the length of the XML in different Windows version. But additionally, in, during the last two years, I've discovered that they have uh, seasonal version, uh, which is very fashionable, like Gucci as winter, winter and uh, summer, so you have transitional winter, transitional summer, and as you can see the difference, there is always a difference. Uh, the, the different collection have really, so I, I still have to make transitional summer 2019, but I'm sure that it would be different from transitional spring. Sorry for the nine missing there. Uh, it's, uh, of course, when, when, when you explain people that, for instance, uh, mimicking uh, Shakespeare, this is uh, LibreOffice mimicking Shakespeare, and this is Microsoft Office mimicking Shakespeare. The, the, actually, the current version is different from this, but it's always but this was, at, the, at, at, at its worst, uh, was transitional summer 2017. So we have, uh, ODT is simpler, if we look at the inside the documents, it's, uh, it's a nice, if you look at presentation, it's funny because the standard says that the file should be, the content file should be one, and in PowerPoint, you have a content file for each slide. So it's not even consistent with the declaration of the standard. So uh, these are the deduction of myself. So either the office developers are a bunch of geniuses, and an applause for the guy, and uh, Microsoft Office developers are a bunch of idiots, but I don't think it is. The difference is that they put stuff unnecessary stuff into Office Open Examiner to make it more difficult to read the, the collateral issue. Five times used in attacks. This uh, was 2011, uh, was a research sponsored by the German government and was done by Symantec. It's PDF, but these are Office documents, so the blue is Office documents. And this is Kaspersky Lab in 2019. So in the last three years, these were attacks using Office documents, and this is attacks using Office documents today. 70% of malware attacks are using an Office document. This, of course, may create an issue. You know that LibreOffice uh, uh, at the Libre logo issue, and uh, I think this uh, can be related a little bit. Uh, the fact that we had uh, a number of uh, uh, CVE in the last few months, 
uh, but the reality is that in, in that case, this is a third party, so this gives you an idea, and if you show this to people and explain, uh, you, you can, I mean, it's up to you to decide to continue to use Office documents. Uh, let's discuss, if you want to have an alternative, let's discuss, we have a better alternative, which is standard. And this is finished, and I think uh, if you have questions, uh, we are really happy to answer the question. Uh, but consider this uh, as the first uh, of a number of meetings going, which might be uh, virtual over the next uh, few uh, months and years, because we need to become better at doing marketing of ODF altogether. So it's not just me, I'm, I spent quite a lot of time in doing this kind of analysis, but it's uh, something that we should do all together. And now I leave to the serious guy that is presenting you uh, ODF 1.3.